Bernard Lohn, Wikipedia article audio. Bernard Lohn is the original developer of the DC defibrillator and the cardioverter. Lohn developed the direct current defibrillator for cardiac resuscitation and the cardioverter for correcting rapid disordered heart rhythms, and introduced a new use for the drug lidocaine to control heartbeat disturbances. Throughout his medical career, Lone focused on two major medical challenges, the problem of sudden cardiac death and the role of psychological stress on the cardiovascular system. His investigations led to many medical breakthroughs. Among these were the coronary care unit. His work made possible and safe much of modern cardiac surgery, as well as a host of other innovations. In 1985, Lone accepted the Nobel Peace Prize on behalf of the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War, an organization he co-founded with Soviet cardiologist Yevgeny Chazov, who later was Minister of Health of the USSR. Early Life and Education Development of the Defibrillator Lone is currently Professor of Cardiology Emeritus at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, and Senior Physician Emeritus at the Brigham and Women's Hospital, Boston, Massachusetts. He is the founder of the Lone Cardiovascular Center and Lone Cardiovascular Research Foundation. He recently founded the Lone Institute which aims to reform both the health care system and society. Born to a Jewish family in Lithuania, the son of a rabbi, Bernard Lone emigrated to the United States at the age of 14. Lone graduated summa cum laude from the University of Maine and received an M.D. from Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine in 1945. His medical training included Yale New Haven Hospital, Montefiore Medical Center, Bronx, New York, and a cardiology fellowship at the Peter Bent Brigham Hospital. His mentor in cardiology was the renowned clinical cardiologist, Samuel A. Levine. Lone helped raise international medical awareness of sudden cardiac death as a leading cause of mortality in the developed world. Based on patient observations, Lone concluded that sudden cardiac death was reversible and survivable, and that people who were successfully resuscitated could have a near normal life expectancy. Working with his mentor Samuel A. Levine, Lone realized that the high mortality of a heart attack, then 35%, was most likely due to rigorous bed rest. Patients remained completely recumbent for six or more weeks. A major complication of bed rest was pulmonary embolism, which accounted for a significant part of the mortality. Although Lone encountered enormous opposition and hostility among doctors to the so-called chair treatment, in 81 patients so treated, mortality was reduced by two-thirds. Once the work was published, the chair treatment was rapidly adopted and hospitalizations were reduced to several days. Untold lives were saved by getting patients out of bed. Fiber Optics Until the 1950s, ventricular fibrillation of the heart could only be treated with drug therapy. In 1956 American cardiologist Paul Zoll described resuscitations during open-heart surgery and later after sudden cardiac death by means of an alternating current electric shock, derived from a wall socket. AC current was untested as to its safety and efficacy and could cause death. In 1959, Lone demonstrated that AC was injurious to the heart and could be lethal. These investigations were conducted in the Department of Nutrition at the Harvard School of Public Health. The work was supported by Professor Frederick Stair, Chairman of the Department of Nutrition. To find a safer method of cardiac resuscitation, Lone enlisted the help of Barak Berkowitz, 
an electrical engineer employed by American Optical Company. In their experimental work, Lone focused on two objectives, safety and efficacy. Alternating current caused burns in skeletal and heart muscle also inducing atrial as well as ventricular fibrillation in a large majority of the animal experiments. Peace Activism During a year of intense experimentation, in 1961 Lone and co-workers proved that a specific direct current waveform consistently reversed ventricular fibrillation, restoring a normal heartbeat without injuring heart or skeletal muscle. This became widely known as the Lone Waveform. It facilitated the worldwide acceptance of the defibrillator and cardioverter and improved survival of patients with coronary heart disease. The DC defibrillator provided a new approach for resuscitating patients. It also paved the way for new possibilities in cardiac surgery. The lone clinical group were the first to use the defibrillator and cardioverter at Peter Bent Brigham Hospital. Donald B. Effler, was the first cardiac surgeon to use the DC defibrillator in 1962 at the Cleveland Clinic. According to Effler, this advance made possible modern cardiac surgery. Indeed, in 1967, René Favaloro performed what is regarded as the first coronary artery bypass operation in Effler's surgical department at Cleveland Clinic. DC defibrillation provided a safe way to restore a normal heart rhythm during the surgical bypass of obstructed coronary arteries. Lone went on to investigate the possibilities of the defibrillator to treat non-life-threatening tachycardias. He discovered that timing the electrical discharge outside the heart's brief vulnerable period of 0.03 seconds in duration prevented ventricular fibrillation or sudden cardiac death. He called this method of timed DC discharge cardioversion. The cardioverter and DC defibrillator were especially valuable in coronary care units, when patients are hospitalized when most susceptible to sudden cardiac death and other potentially malignant arrhythmias. Physicians for Social Responsibility In addition to advancing medical technology, Lone discovered new applications for two drugs that were widely used for cardiac problems. Digitalis and Lidocaine. Until the 1950s, Digitalis poisoning was a major cause of fatality among patients with congestive heart failure. During a medical residency at the Montefiore Hospital in New York City, Lone demonstrated the critical role of potassium in determining the safe use of Digitalis. His discovery led to abandonment of long-acting digitalis drugs like digitoxin. Instead, the short-acting digitalis glycoside gained universal acceptance. It also focused medical attention on potassium loss with the use of Vavarius diuretics. Committee of Responsibility for War Injured Vietnamese Children In 1964, Lone introduced a new use for the drug lidocaine to control ventricular disordered heart rhythms. Lidocaine was also used in coronary units to prevent the need for resuscitation. Previously, lidocaine was used almost exclusively by dentists as an anesthetic agent. International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War In 1957, Lone was concerned with how to visualize an atherosclerotic aortic plaque, which occurs in the big coronary vessels that supply nutrients to the heart muscle. This would, he hoped, lead to discovering how to treat and prevent heart attack and sudden cardiac death. A discussion with a close friend, Elias Snitzer a physicist at Massachusetts Institute of Technology led to an introduction to Michael Polanyi, a physicist with American Optical Company. At the time, Polanyi was working on fiber optics. 
Lone received a grant from the Hartford Foundation to pursue fiber optics. However, optical technology, at the time, was inadequate. This line of research was discontinued. Lone's work did show that, with fiber optics, it was possible to measure oxygen saturation in dogs, and determine the cardiac output in humans. Paradoxically, when Lone submitted two abstracts to the World Cardiology Conference in Mexico in 1964, one on the defibrillator and cardioversion, and one dealing with fiber optics, the former was rejected and the latter accepted. International Public Health Work In early 1961, Lone called together a group of physicians from Boston's teaching hospitals to address the mounting threat of nuclear war between the USSR and the USA. This political subject had not been addressed previously by physicians in the United States. The new organization called itself Physicians for Social Responsibility. Among the activist participants were Jack Geiger and Victor W. Seidel. By the end of 1961, the group had drafted five research articles about the medical consequences of a 10-megaton nuclear attack on the city of Boston, a magnitude considered both possible and likely by the U.S. military. The series, The Medical Consequences of Thermonuclear War, was published as a symposium in the New England Journal of Medicine in May 1962. These articles encouraged anti-nuclear medical movements worldwide. Additionally, they helped pass the Limited Test Ban Treaty in the U.S. Senate. Lone was also involved in organizing COR, Committee of Responsibility to Save War Burned and War Injured Children, of which he was a leading member. This organization aimed to bring injured and burned Vietnamese children for treatment in the United States, in order to bring the war home. COR was headed by Herbert Needleman. It arranged for several American hospitals to treat injured Vietnamese children for free. John Constable III, from the Shriner Burn Center of the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston, was among the first physicians to participate. He and other physicians traveled numerous times to Vietnam to choose children with injuries that could be helped. Sadal Life and Pro COR This mission could not be accomplished without ambulance planes ferrying the very sick children. Lone led a delegation to Washington for a meeting with William F. Bundy, then Assistant Secretary of State. He was persuaded to support the objective of COR. In 1967 the Pentagon began to transport Vietnamese children to the USA. Ad Hoc Committee to Defend Health Care In 1980, Lone called on a small number of doctors to organize against the mounting nuclear threat that followed USSR's invasion of Afghanistan and the election of the Reagan administration. This small group of physicians, with the help largely of first-year Harvard medical students, formed the International Physicians for the Prevention of Nuclear War. This IPN could not have been founded without the intimate friendship between Eugene Chazov and Lone. Both cardiologists, they had collaborated in researching the issue of sudden cardiac death, sponsored by the National Heart and Lung Institute. Lone headed the American Sudden Death Task Force, while Chazov headed the Soviet group of cardiologists. Frequent visits to the USSR with American cardiological colleagues promoted dialogue and understanding between physicians of the two hostile countries. It laid the groundwork and made the IPN possible. These events are described in Lone's memoir, Prescription for Survival. A Doctor's Journey to End Nuclear Madness The first IPN Annual World Congress was held at Arley House, Virginia, in 1981. 
80 medical leaders from 12 countries attended. The Lone Institute and the Right Care Alliance Personal Life Awards and Honors Honors from the Harvard School of Public Health In 1982, the Second Ipn Congress took place in Cambridge, England with over 400 participants. Among the American participants were astrophysicist and science populizer, Carl Sagan, Admiral Noel Gaylor, formerly head of the American Pacific Fleet, director of the National Security Agency, and in charge of targeting nuclear weapons against he USSR, Howard Hyatt, Dean of the Harvard School of Public Health, and Herbert Abrams, Head of Radiology at the Harvard Medical School. Equally distinguished participants attended from the UK, Germany, and Scandinavian countries. A major breakthrough for Ibn was arranged by Eugene Chazov in 1982 when three Soviet physicians and three American physicians appeared on a nationwide Soviet television network. The Soviet participants were Chazov, Michael Kuzin, and Leonid Ilyan, while the Americans were Lone, James Muller, and John Pastor. During this unprecedented telecast an audience of 100 million Soviet viewers for the first time heard an unedited discussion of the consequences of nuclear war. The program was later broadcast in the U.S. By 1985, IPN represented 135,000 physicians in 60 countries. In December of that year, Lone and Chazov accepted the 1985 Nobel Peace Prize on behalf of IPN. Shortly thereafter, Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev invited IPN CO President Sloan and Chazov for a meeting in the Kremlin. The lengthy discussion covered a host of issues. Discussed was Gorbachev's unilateral moratorium on nuclear weapons testing, the arrest and detention of Nobel laureate physicist Andrei Sakharov in the city of Gorky, the North-South Divide, and other important subjects. Two organizations founded by Lone, Sadal Life, and ProCOR were designed to aid physicians in developing countries by connecting them to relevant information on cardiovascular disease and its prevention. Their focus was on global inequities in healthcare and leveraging technology to promote health equality. Sadal Life employed low Earth orbit satellites that circumnavigated the poles and were capable of reaching every point on Earth four times daily. They provided access to medical literature to health professionals in developing countries. ProCOR created an Internet network of health workers in developing countries around the world. This Internet-based community enabled physicians and health workers to access relevant and reliable medical information about cardiovascular disease. The focus was on disease prevention. It also offered an email-based forum for discussion. The Lone Visiting Professor ProCOR's global outreach included the Ashanta Proker Project, launched in 2006 which was designed to assess cardiovascular disease knowledge and practice among health workers in the Ashanti region of Ghana, identify those who can play a key role in prevention, and explore their information needs as a way to better address the needs of physicians in the developing world. In 1996, Lone, with Stephanie Woolhandler and David Himmelstein of the Cambridge City Hospital, Jerry Avorn, head of pharmacoepidemiology at the Harvard Medical School, and Susan Bennett, a primary care physician at Massachusetts General Hospital formed the Ad Hoc Committee to Defend Health Care. Many health workers joined the Ad Hoc Committee, the objective of which was to promote a single-payer health care system in Massachusetts. In 1997, a letter signed by over 2,000 Massachusetts physicians outlined the need for single-payer health care. 
The letter was published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. The ad hoc committee canvassed people through the state of Massachusetts to gain the 100,000 names necessary to put the issue on the ballot. Loan Bibliography The issue was put to referendum in Massachusetts in 2000. In spite of opposition, the referendum showed 45% of voters in favor of single-payer health care. In 2012, Lone and colleagues founded the Lone Institute. The Lone Institute addresses the growing crisis in health care in the USA, marked by overtreatment, undertreatment and mistreatment through research, clinical programs, and convenings. The Institute holds an annual conference, where the newest research on overuse and underuse is presented, and where like-minded clinicians and patient advocates can share ideas. They also sponsor clinical programs to address overuse such as the Right Care Educators Program, Right Care Rounds, and the Right Care Vignette Competition. The Lone Institute is currently conducting research on risk adjustment methods for evaluating patient outcomes. Among participants in the leadership of the Lone Institute are Nasib Kamoun, Vika Saini, Shannon Brownlee, Thomas Grayboise, Professor Joseph Brain, Patricia Gabo, Elizabeth Gilbertson, James Jocelyn, Aretha Davis, David Bohr. Michael Fine, Breck Eagle, and others. The Right Care Alliance is the sister organization of the Lone Institute and the Advocacy Wing. The Right Care Alliance brings together clinicians, patients, and community members into a grassroots movement advocating for a universally accessible, affordable, safe, and effective health care system. The RCA is organized into specialty councils and regional chapters that organize on topics specific to their specialty or region. The RCA holds a week of action every year, in which members organize activities that demonstrate compassionate, patient-centered care, such as engaging the broader community in listening and storytelling. The steering committee of the RCA is chaired by Vika Saini and Shannon Brownlee, and members include Poppy Arford, Maya Dorset, Casey Wilson, Selwyn Rogers, Jonathan Jimenez, Jane Muir, Teresa Ohala, Stuart Fisk, Marlene Begelman, Kim DeJoya, and Sure Foltziga. Lone is married, he and his wife, Louise, have three children. Lone has received numerous awards including the Golden Door Award from the International Institute of Boston, the Dr. Paul Dudley White Award from the American Heart Association, the Distinguished Emeritus Professor from Harvard School of Public Health, the Distinguished Medical Alumnus Award by Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, and the highest honor from the country of Lithuania the Cross of Commander of the Order of the Lithuanian Grand Duke Gadaminas, the Gandhi Peace Award, and the first Cardinal Medeiros Peace Award, as well as 21 honorary degrees from universities both in the United States and abroad. In 1993, he delivered the Indira Gandhi Memorial Lecture in New Delhi. The bridge that connects the cities of Lewiston and Auburn in Maine was renamed the Bernard Lone Peace Bridge upon an act by the state legislature that was signed into law by Governor John Baldacci in 2008. The Brigham and Women's Hospital in 2009 established the Bernard Lone Educational Award. The recipient is selected by staff and students. The Lone Scholars Program at the Harvard School of Public Health aims to assist promising health professionals who live and work in low- and middle-income countries. It is designed to create an international cadre of talented health professionals who will use public health tools and strategies to prevent cardiovascular disease and promote cardiac health. In 2012, 
a visiting professorship was established whose function is to coordinate the courses afforded to the lone scholars as well as help promote cardiovascular preventative programs in low- and middle-income countries. Lone is also the author or co-author of 52 chapters. He is the author or co-author of 447 publications in scientifically refereed journals.